right. Well, good morning, Rotary District 7770, and welcome to Conversations with Rotary Action People for Monday, March 14th, 2022. Hope everyone is doing well. Joining me today to talk about the Southeastern Guide Dogs is Bitly Murrell. Mur uh, Merle. 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 Right, Merle Zinley. Like, got it. I, I like it. Sorry, we should have probably uh, practiced that before we started. But here's a little brief bio on Bitly. Uh, he's a former member of the Five Points Club and is currently a member of the Lake, Muro, Lake Murray Irmo Rotary. Bentley has spent his career in the insurance technology industry, working with many of the largest insurance and technology companies around the world. Currently with UK and based in WTW, formerly Willis Towers Watson, Bentley serves on several boards and mentors startup companies with the University of South Carolina Columbia Technolo Technological Incubator. None of the past experience has anything to do with him helping his wife, Karen, as a puppy raiser for Southeastern Guide Dogs. Bentley, welcome to CRAP. We look forward to your presentation, sir. Thank you so much. And let's see if I can do this right. I'm going to share my screen. So if somebody will give me a thumbs up that we're, that we're working. All right, fantastic. Uh, but thank you again, everybody, for having me this morning. I bring you greetings from the Irmo. Uh, Lake Murray Rotary Club, um, and uh, I am just, I'm going to put it right out there, and, and the guys that were on here before heard me say, I'm just along for the ride on this uh, raising uh, guide dogs, so I have to give full credit to my wife, uh, Karen. She has always wanted to raise a guide dog, so she went out and did her own research. Uh, she contacted a number of organizations, uh, one of those uh, we're going to talk about today, Southeastern Guide Dogs. Um, and what I'm going to do is start our talk out this morning with a very short video. It's four minutes. Um, I typically do not show videos when I'm doing presentations, but this will be the best four minute video that you'll see today, I promise. So, but I think this gives you a good overview in terms of what Southeastern's uh, uh, mission is, and then what I'd like to do is switch gears, and then I'm going to walk you through what it takes uh, to be not only a guide dog, but what it takes to be uh, a puppy raiser, again, which is what my wife, and by default, uh, I am doing. And then we'll talk about some of the careers of a guide dog as well. So uh, not all dogs can make it as a seeing eye dog. There are a number of careers, and if a dog doesn't want to work, there are other paths as well. So with that, what I'm going to do is uh, start our video and sit back and enjoy. Thank you so much for stopping. I typically use Teams, so I'm not a Zoom guy. Southeastern Guide Dogs began in 1982 with a single vision to help those who cannot see. Humble beginnings meant a farmhouse, three dogs, a single trainer, and one small step at a time. Because of our community of supporters, we now operate the most advanced training facilities of any service dog organization in the world. And we employ some of the most talented and innovative scientists and trainers in the working dog industry. Our experts train dogs of the highest pedigree for people with vision loss, veterans with disabilities, and children with significant challenges, such as vision loss or the loss of a parent in the military. It takes two years to raise and train each dog. And it all begins with the puppies born in our Puppy Academy. But these are no ordinary puppies because we're creating the Olympic athletes of the service dog world. We combine art and science to create the healthiest, smartest dogs through our data-driven genetics and reproduction program. We start training our puppies when they are just days old, and every puppy receives a targeted, individualized education plan. At 10 weeks, the second phase of training begins. 
as we send our puppies home with volunteer puppy raisers to learn basic obedience, house manners, and socialization. We rely on about 300 puppy raisers in seven states who return our pups in about a year for their college education. At Freshman Orientation, our animal behavior experts evaluate confidence and temperament, while our veterinarians evaluate hips, elbows, hearts, eyes, and overall health. Only dogs with the best health become working dogs. Our veterinary facilities rival top animal hospitals in the world, and we've taken veterinary care to a rare new level by merging the best of Eastern and Western medicine. At Canine University, our dogs begin college-level training to learn advanced skills for their future careers. After their training is complete, our dogs are ready to meet their new partners. Our trainers match each dog with the right recipient according to needs, lifestyle, pace, personality, and activity level. Once we create a strong match, we invite qualified applicants to join a class. It's the human's turn to learn how to work confidently with their dogs. While in class, students live in private guest rooms and enjoy delicious meals in our full-service dining hall. After a busy schedule of hands-on learning, class lectures, and plenty of practice in nearby cities, students are ready to take on the world. We follow up with our teams for life, ensuring their ongoing success. Creating these human-dog connections is a big team effort. We care for over 1,000 dogs and support over 550 active teams and all of our services are provided at no cost to recipients. We rely 100% on private donations and receive no government funding. And because of people like you, we give our dogs as gifts. Gifts of freedom, independence, confidence, courage, and hope. We invite you to share our vision and tap into the heart and passion that it takes to make a difference for people who cannot see and for those who have seen too much. Welcome to Southeastern Guide Dogs. Okay, everybody still there? Yes, sir. Fantastic. And now you should be seeing some slides. Yes, sir. All right. Great. Well, hopefully everybody has a smile on their face uh, after seeing that video. Really, that's the best way that I could uh, think of to give you an idea of what Southeastern Guide Dogs is all about. But today what we're going to talk about is that time from, um, you know, what it takes. You heard that it takes two years to become a guide dog. Uh, we're involved with the dog's uh, first year and a half of life. So, it all begins uh, with the genetics lab. Um, there's nothing romantic about it, uh, but uh, primarily the types of dogs they use are labs and goldens. Uh, our dog, Carmen, is what's known as a golden door. Her mother was uh, a, a golden retriever and her dad was Labrador. So uh, breeders are one of the career paths for these dogs. Um, these breeders typically live with volunteer families that are close by uh, Southeastern Guide Dogs down in the Sarasota area. Um, but these moms, when they're due, they'll bring them back onto campus uh, where the, the puppies are actually whelped. Uh, they whelp upwards of 300 puppies a year. So uh, training actually starts the second day of the life of these puppies. Uh, the first six weeks is what's known as preschool. Uh, weeks six through 10 are what's known as kindergarten. And what they're doing with these dogs is they are constantly exposing them to new activities, new colors, new sounds, um, evaluating the puppies from really day one, from both physical and mental and aptitude um, perspectives. 
So uh, they're, they're constantly running these dogs, like I said, training them, exposing them to all things new and fun. And if all goes well, their final evaluation, then they end up graduating from preschool. And this is our proud dog's uh, preschool graduation picture. So this is Carmen when she was about seven weeks old. Uh, she also got her name at this point in time. So you can imagine having you know, multiple litters of puppies around uh, constantly. It's very difficult to, to name everybody. So what they do is up until that time, she was officially known as 1H21, which means that she was the first born of the H litter or the eighth litter of the year 2021. So she was born last, uh, a year last week on March 7th. Um, her name, um, one of the fundraising activities that Southeastern Guide Dogs uses is if you'd like to name a dog, uh, you can make a donation of $5,000. And the couple that is sponsoring Carmen is actually from Ohio. They are Ohio State fans. And the Ohio State alumni song is Carmen, Ohio. So that's where the name Carmen comes from. So uh, at this point in time, she was known as Carmen instead of 1H21. But officially, she still goes by 1H21. What does it take to be a dog raiser or puppy raiser? So you have to be a minimum of uh, 18. Uh, there's no maximum age handling, but these dogs are strong. So you do need to be able to physically take care of the dog. There are a number of online training courses, and this is where I have to give all the credit to my wife, Karen. Um, she took all of these training courses. Uh, she completed the exams. Um, we actually had uh, started working with a local coordinator um, based out of uh, Charlotte. Um, and we go through, or she went through interview processes. Uh, not only did she need to be interviewed, but our current pet, uh, Emmy, who was a 12 pound Shih Tzu, had to be interviewed as well um, because they wanted to make sure that uh, our Shih Tzu would be compatible uh, with our dog that we got assigned. So, um, if all goes well, you actually sign a contract and you get a 140 page user manual. I kind of joke about that. It's the only dog I've ever known to come with a user's manual. So puppy school twice a month. I, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, there's local training groups. Um, I think the video mentioned seven states have puppy raisers and you're not just stuck out on your own. So you work with uh, local groups. This is a group out of Charlotte. Uh, Columbia, South Carolina, where I'm based, has no um, has no training group. So um, there are training groups in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Texas, Ohio, Alabama, and I am excited to say that South Carolina is getting their first one in Charleston. So anybody watching from the Low Country who would take an interest in this. Uh, there is a group out of Charleston uh, that's just now starting up. There's also another group in Savannah. So anybody in the Hilton Head area, Buford area, that would be interested, there's a group out of Savannah. But you can see puppy school, they get together, and this is much training for the handlers as it is for the dogs. And then everyday training. This is our dog, Carmen. So on the left-hand side, um, this was uh, one of her first trips out. I think this was at an office uh, supply store. Uh, the middle picture, we were actually at a local brewery. Uh, the young gentleman in the picture there is, uh, was going off to Army Flight Training School. Carmen really likes breweries. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see my wife taking Carmen through the local sporting goods store. You'll notice on the right picture, she has her vest on. It says guide dog in training. She actually had to earn that. So she had to go through a certain number of tests. She had to be able to recognize certain commands. In the picture on the left-hand side, you'll notice she did not have her vest on because she was still a uh, guide dog in training at that point in time. So she has a bandana on there. But with that vest, she is legally able to go anywhere that we go. So she is covered under the ADA. We have had no issues at all in taking her into anywhere, restaurants, hotels, uh, any venue at all. So uh, with that vest, she can legally go anywhere we go, including football games. So on the left-hand side, we took her to an Alabama game. 
On the right-hand side, she is at a Clemson game. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, when we went to the Clemson game, that was the Military Appreciation Day. We actually had a gentleman come up to us. He was with the DAV, Dis Dis Disabled American Veterans. And he, he literally had a, a, a tear in his eye. And he said that he has a service dog. And that service dog, he credits with saving his life. Now, the reason he was so excited to see Carmen was his dog is not acclimated to the loud noises and crowds of a football game. So he could not bring his dog to the game. Uh, but when he saw Carmen, you know, he was so excited that she actually was at the game, was enjoying it. Uh, and that really meant a lot for him to come and, and, and talk to us about that. It's not all work, of course. Uh, these are some pictures, again, of, of our dog, Carmen, on the left-hand side. That was her first time at the beach. You know, she really enjoyed that. The upper middle uh, picture, that's when we first brought her home. So she does look a little bit smaller there. Uh, just as a side note, that big beautiful rug that she's on, we did roll that up for the first couple months we had her at home. Uh, these dogs do not come potty trained, uh, we found out. So that's part of our exercise with them as well. The picture on the upper right hand side, this is a glamour shot of, uh, of, of Carmen with one of her favorite toys. Uh, the bottom left, I think she's standing on top of me asking where dinner is. And then on the right hand side, her favorite, uh, her favorite friend is a Doberman. It's a couple months older than she is, another female. They get together and play and run around and around and get tired and they'll just lay there in the grass holding each other. She does, uh, she has represented Rotary as well. Um, we're uh, Lake Murray Irma Rotary Club. We are very active in the local okra strut, the big festival held every September. So Carmen did work our booth and she was, um, she attracted a lot of attention. We got a lot of folks coming to the booth, you know, wanting to learn more about her and, and, and see her. So she had fun there. And then I just wanted to put a couple uh, uh, couple things here as well. Um, service dogs seem to be getting a lot of attention these days. There's a wonderful Netflix movie. If you're looking for something to watch, it's called To Be of Service. It follows five of these service dogs, specifically with our veterans. And um, in several cases, these veterans are, uh, you know, crediting these dogs with saving their lives. Uh, you know, there's PTSD. We hear so much about it. We hear so much about suicide within our, our, our veterans, the ranks of our veterans. Um, but these dogs, you know, give these individuals, in many cases, a reason to a, a reason to live, you know, somebody to focus in on, and then they, the dogs focus back on them. Um, it's a very touching movie. So on the right-hand side, our, our Rotarian magazine, uh, I don't know if you saw it, it was on the back, um, back of that magazine, there was a recent article about being inclusive uh, and our clubs need to be inclusive. And the gentleman that was the subject of the article, uh, he is partially blind and uh, talked about his service dog, which he brings to his Rotary Club every week. So uh, we have uh, Carmen, we got her back in uh, early July. We will take her back down for her college training um, this coming up August. I think the day is actually August 7th. So we have her for a little over a year. And again, we are basically uh, trying to acclimate her, give her basic training. We don't actually train her to be a seeing eye dog. That's where professionals step in. So she'll go back down for college. That'll take six months of professional training. And then based on how well she's done, she will be assigned a career. So some of those careers that are available to a service dog. I mentioned already the breeder. So they do breed all of their own dogs. So the smartest and, and, and the top, of the, the cream of the crop, they will use as breeders and they'll stay locally again with volunteer families. <clears throat> Guide dog is probably what we most think of uh, as jobs for these dogs. And I think uh, being a guide dog is really at the top of the heap. That's where the smartest uh, dogs you know, go. Not only do the dogs have to know how to mind and obey, but they also know have to be trained to disobey. And uh, what I mean by that is, if somebody is blind and wants to step out into the street, the dog needs to realize that. And even though it's being told to lead, 
that dog needs to realize no or not. So uh, that's pretty significant uh, accomplishment for these dogs. I've already talked about the veteran service dog. This is uh, one of those areas that has a huge demand uh, right now. Um, and uh, again, if you get a chance to see the movie, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll understand why, but uh, it's a fantastic career for these dogs. Facility therapy dog. This is another career route. And this one actually is military related as well. This is a medical uh, military uh, facility. Um, uh, one of the more recent placings of these dogs is a, a facility therapy dog is with the uh, Washington DC Capitol Police. You know, with all of the events that occurred last year, there's a lot of stress and trauma and the Capitol Police actually now have a therapy dog uh, assigned to them. Public service dogs. Now, this is uh, another area that we see dogs a lot um, used in law enforcement. These dogs can be used for search and rescue, uh, to sniff bombs, uh, drugs, you know, firearms. Um, so some dogs, those dogs who are more, you know, acclimated to be scent driven. And may not be as social as some of the dog fantastic career path for those. And then one of the ones I think are really special is canine connections for young children who have disabilities, whether it's physical, sight, or whatever these dogs can be assigned to them. And uh, I think it's a very uh, touching career as well. Gold star family dogs, you know, for those families who have lost a family member uh, in the line of service, military service, um, you know, they can apply and, uh, and, and receive a dog to become part of their family as well. And then for those dogs that may not be the smartest in the world, uh, but have lots of personalities, um, some of them can be used as ambassador dogs. Ambassador dogs, not only for Southeastern guide dogs, but for other animal uh, welfare groups as well. So, you know, there's a role for, for all these dogs. I do get questions sometimes, what happens when a dog just doesn't make it? Uh, and and, and the, uh, the attrition rate is high for these dogs, you know, upwards of 40% of the dogs just decide that they do not want to work. None of these careers are, are, are appropriate for them. So, um, but as you can imagine, these dogs are, um, you know, very smart, even if they don't make the program. And they, uh, there is a long uh, adoption list for dogs that don't make it as a service dog. So um, if a dog doesn't make it as a service dog, the puppy raiser gets the first uh, right of refusal uh, to take the dog. And if the puppy raiser doesn't want to have it, then they'll make it uh, available to the general public. And like I said, there's a long waiting list for that. <clears throat> so watching my time here, I have just a few minutes in summary. Uh, you know, Southeastern Guide Dogs, again, located near Sarasota, Florida. Over 1,200 puppies and dogs in their programs uh, today, 600 uh, plus active teams. They don't charge anything for any of their services, even when uh, somebody comes down to um, uh, comes down to pick up their dog and stays there for the three weeks of training. That's all done free. So they rely. They have uh, some fantastic corporate sponsors. Um, I'll stop sharing here, including some of the big uh, dog food companies: Purina, Froms. Uh, Subaru is a big sponsor, Progressive, and then of course individuals like you and me as well uh, help sponsor them. So with that, my time says it's 11:28, so uh, two minutes to go. Hopefully, that's, hopefully there's a question or two, and we can um, we, we can address those. Yeah, great presentation. Uh, I don't notice any questions in the chat. Uh, I do see someone said O H I O. Uh, I think we know who that is. I, I did ask a question too. I mean, uh, I'll it's the bottom. Yeah. Okay. How old is Carmen and when do you give her back? Yes. So thank you for asking. Carmen turned one year old last week. Her birthday was March 7th. Uh, again, we picked her up. The, uh, I think we picked her up on June 7th of this past year, and we will take her back down to college on August the 7th. So we have her for about 14 months, which is typical for these dogs. So you add the 14 months with the puppy raiser and then six months uh, of the college training on site with the professional trainers. It's about two years from the time a dog is born till when they are assigned to their eventual handler. 
So you, you and your wife, have you done more than one dog or is this your first? Yeah, this is our first one. Um, and again, this is something that my wife wanted to do. She did the legwork. I have to give her full credit. She did a fantastic job, did a lot of, uh, a lot of research. If there is anyone out there who has ever thought of this and you are looking for an organization uh, to do this with, I would highly recommend Southeastern Guide Dogs. They are the largest in the world. You saw their facility, absolutely incredible facility. Um, uh, we do have a group uh, that's starting up again in Charleston. So those folks who are in the low country, you know, you've got a group starting up in Charleston. You've already got one down in Savannah. Um, for those who are closer to Charlotte, you know, we're about an hour and a half away from Charlotte. You know, there's a group up there. Um, but it is important, you know, to have that support group around. Bentley, when, when do they uh, select the likely career path for the dog? Or that, is that selected uh, before you get it or after you, after you give it up or during the interim or when is that? Yeah, Landon, great question there as well. So when we take it back um, or when she goes back down to college, they'll start that evaluation right then. So for the next six months, you know, they start to look at the dog. What, uh, what, are the, what, what are the traits of that dog? What are they good at? And they'll start to, you know, uh, push that dog towards that career. So part of that six months is all about evaluating the dog, further training. And then by the end of the six months, they pretty much know what the, what the dog is going to be well suited for. Bentley, I have two questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, the first one is, will you get another dog? And the second one is, once you give Carmen up, do you keep up with her? Or do you, are you just completely lose contact with her? Yeah, the first question, uh, you know, they, 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 they kind of joke and say, look, if, you know, uh, if you get attached to the dog, when you bring her down, you can always pick up a new puppy and start over again. We will probably have a break in there uh, because it is a, it is a full-time job. You know, it's not like we can take her and leave her at a kennel if we go out of town or something. Um, that's part of that contract I mentioned. We can't, we can't do that. Um, I'm sorry, Mary, the second question. Remind me again. Do you keep up with her once you oh, give her so, up? Yes, yes. So typically for the first, um, oh, goodness, I think it's for the first 60 days, they ask that you don't. Um, but after that point in time, you can keep up with the dog. Um, a lot of the times for the veteran service dogs, though, um, they will ask you not to keep up with the dog. Um, they want a, a clear break at that point in time. Uh, I failed to mention there's also a very active Facebook group. So, um, you know, these dogs, you know, constantly chatter going back and forth, following the dogs, seeing how they're doing. Um, you know, Carmen has a number of siblings. So people will reach out and ask, hey, I'm looking for uh, H21 uh, siblings. Now, remember Carmen, she was one H21. Her sister is two H21. Her sister is named Pixel. Um, and that's the one we keep up with, but there's five other dogs that, you know, we have never met before, but we know that they're part of H21 litter and we get to see pictures of them and all. <clears throat> I know you said that they're breeding, uh, Labradors and, and Goldens and Golden Doors are with, when they do a breeding, are they breeding for a specific job or are they generally breeding for a type and then they select jobs after? Them? Yeah. Yeah. Landon, this, that's, that's, um, that's another good question, actually. They breed, the breeders are the smartest dogs that they have and, the, and they have the best physical attributes. So, um, and, and then, you know, they, they take the best male, best female, you know, get them together. And then basically you cross your fingers at that point in time. You just don't know. Um, Part of the training process, we actually switched Carmen off with another family uh, about two weeks ago. So we, we gave Carmen up for a couple of weeks and then we took in their dog. Their name was Charlie. Now Charlie was a 10 month lab, absolute fantastic dog. I hate to say how great he was because everybody wants their own child to be the best. Um, but you know, both of these dogs were just, just fantastic. But, you know, they identify the dogs. They're able to tell early on which ones aren't going to be able to adapt or they don't want to work. And again, I hate to say weed them out and they don't say weed them out. It's, uh, what do they say? Career change, which is much more acceptable. <clears throat> and what's and they Carmen's don't career? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Go sorry. Ahead. 
What's what's have they decided Carmen's likely career path? At no, they won't. Point? They won't know until she goes back down to to college, um, and they probably won't know for a couple months. Um, again, that's a six month process once she goes back down, and then but they'll tell but, you what it is once once they know, right? Yes, yes, yes. We'll they'll they'll keep up. So we're we're hoping for the best. You know, the top of the heap there is is being a, a, a guide dog. So we're we're hoping that Carmen is going to do it. She needs to get over a few things. Um, she still lunges a lot on on walks. So you know, it's it's typical for a dog to smell something and boom, or a squirrel and go. Um, squirrels don't bother her. Uh, other dogs, she's getting much better about. Um, but still, she'll pick up a scent, uh, and then all of a sudden, she'll poop, go. But part of even her walking, she has to walk on my left-hand side. She has to walk what's known as a loose leash, meaning she's not pulling on the leash, but the leash is loose, and she needs to listen to me. She needs to be watching me. So whenever we take her for a walk, we have a treat bag. These dogs are food-driven. She would throw me under the bus in a second for a treat. You know, let there be no doubt. But as we're walking, you know, she's looking up at me, I treat her, I praise her the whole time. And that's how you train them. Okay, Bentley, question for you. Um, you've trained her. And so when you send her back in, do they check behind you to make sure that maybe a part of the training might have been missing that she would have been a good guide dog, but maybe y'all didn't do, I, I don't know how to delicately put this. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so let me put it a maybe more undelicately way. Yeah. <laughs> My uh, my biggest fear and Karen's biggest fear is what if we do something to mess this dog up? And they've been very good about that. And they've told us, look, whatever you do, you're not going to mess the dog up. A dog is going to either have a predetermined, uh, uh, you know, temperament to, to, to work or not. You know, you can't mess it up. Now, yes, you may miss, uh, uh, miss a training attribute and they'll pick up that quick. And these professional trainers, they'll they'll find out where the dogs need work, you know, where they're doing well and where they're not doing well. Okay, she doesn't heal. All right, let's work on healing. Now, she doesn't stay when she's supposed to. Um, she doesn't go down when she's supposed to. You know, that's a big thing now um, is, you know, sit and then down for a dog. Because if you're at a restaurant or something, you don't want the dog running around. You want the dog to go down and stay. Uh, and to get comfortable, you know, very quickly. So they'll identify, you know, the shortcomings because nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. But that is so a they don't fear. just take your word for it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. These dogs, um, when we got Carmen, she came with a list of, of everything that her, what she's good at, bad at, physical, you know, everything. It's just incredible how well documented these dogs are. So you said that uh, when you when you all got Carmen, they gave you all some training on being a trainer on, on how, how to do that. What is the training methodology that they, they primarily use? So uh, and this is this is I'm giving all the credit to my wife as well, because I have not gone through the training. Uh, but there is a whole series of online training that you have to go through before you are even considered to be a puppy raiser. And these training, it's goodness, probably eight or nine. Um, video and you do have to take a test uh, a written test at the end of each one now when she goes up for uh, school you know twice a month to meet with the other pupper raisers pupper raisers school that's additional training so you have local coordinators um, you know hands-on training uh, working with these dogs it may be um, you know stepping in and out of a box it may be um, you know working on healing you know heal it may be working on a specific behavior. So it's the online training up front, you know, passing all the courses, and then there's ongoing um, you know, puppy school training for both the dog and the raisers. Uh, there's one other question in there. I don't know if you saw it, Donald. Uh, do you train any small dogs for service? No, um, it's just the Goldens and the Labs. Um, Somebody asked me, or, or uh, do, you, do they ever train uh, German Shepherds? Because, you know, we think of, or at least I do, um, German Shepherds as being uh, service dogs. But, uh, you know, German Shepherds, fantastic dog, very smart, but they can also be uh, aggressive as well. So what they have found is the retrievers, not only are they food driven, um, which is very, very important for training, 
but they have the, 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 the temperament and the smarts to be a good, good guide dog. So I think you'll see more and more guide dogs either, you know, coming from the retriever. You know. And these people who pass off little fluffy dogs as therapy dogs and stuff, no, and that's a that's that's misinformation. You know, we had a local thing in the news here. A restaurant uh, got in trouble because they asked the people to take their therapy dog out. It was a Chihuahua in an Amazon vault vest. It was bigger than the dog. Um, obviously, not a therapy dog. Um, so there is a lot of misinformation. People call anything a therapy dog these days. Um, well, you can we get actually, the license online, I think, can't you? It's, it's, it's just really gotten out of hand. But everybody yeah. we, we've dealt with has been fantastic. We've never been turned down. Um, and most people are very good about not coming up to the dog and wanting to pet. And when she's got that vest on, she's working. So we don't want people to pet her. And she knows it's serious. So she knows she's working. She knows she can't go to the bathroom when she's got that vest on. She knows that she needs to be right by me. She knows that she needs to be listening and watching me. We had a service dog at the conference <clears throat> this weekend. Katie Grace uh, is Karen Cully's service dog. And uh, mm. amazing that she would sit in a crowded room, quiet, lay in there, didn't move a muscle. And she was wonderful. And that's very difficult for a dog. It really is. Um, I would think. So that's one of the things we're working on with Carmen. Great program. Thank you, Ben. Bentley, thank you. Uh, thank you so much you. for uh, coming on and sharing yes. this information. Uh, those of you that 